other. Can you hear us? Uh, yes, sir, I can hear you loud and clear. Well, the Vice President and I wanted to call you and congratulate you on one of the most spectacular space missions in our history. We're all so proud of you, and we've been able to see you do all those things. It's, it's just been wonderful, and I, I want to thank each and every one of you for what you've done. You made it look easy. Well, we appreciate uh, the thanks uh, and congratulations, sir. Uh, that's, uh, that's nice, particularly coming from you. Uh, as you know, uh, great adventures uh, are once-in-a-lifetime opportunities, and the seven of us were lucky to be able to be part of uh, this adventure. Uh, I know that you know this, but you have really both educated and inspired people all over the world. I don't think any of us will ever forget the uh, image of KT lifting the damaged solar panel over her head and then letting it go. That was a moment of high drama. Maybe you should come down here and help us stage our events on Earth. <laughs> I think it's easier to throw away solar panels. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad the press corps heard you say that. <laughs> this is uh, Vice President Al Gore. I, I want to also congratulate all of you. It was a fantastic mission and, and still is. And I think that most Americans see your success uh, not only in terms of the specific mission you have successfully performed, but also as a symbol of NASA on the way back, uh, and NASA being restored to uh, its place in our country, inspiring future generations, inspiring people with the can-do spirit that we associated uh, NASA with during most of its history. And I think you can be proud of, of, uh, of that accomplishment as well. I know that the, the, the uh, spirit of your mission and the the whole feeling of the team on the ground and everybody in NASA, including Dan Golden, who is here with the President and me, has been just uh, remarkable and has symbolized uh, NASA turning the corner, if you will, and, and, and coming back strong. Stuart Musgrave, sir, one of the uh, EVA group members, as you can see, uh, we got some different colors here, the magenta, I guess you call it, or the, the space walkers, and uh, the ones in, uh, up front there in, in navy blue, uh, they're the ones that uh, took care of us and launched us, took care of us during the spacewalks and will bring us back home. But uh, what you say, uh, what it took was incredible attention to detail and an incredible amount of energy to identify what surprises uh, might come up and try to assure that we wouldn't get the job done an immense amount of training, but I think it did. Uh, the challenge was a very, very ambitious mission uh, to restore Hubble to, to uh, fix the fair collaboration, to restore Hubble so it will be good for many, many more years of science. A very ambitious mission, but it did take uh, the kind of stuff that we have, and that's mostly attention to detail, identify surprises, turn over every stone, and give it all the energy we got. It also took at least one person who was making his fifth uh, journey into space. I'm looking at you. Can't imagine what a wonderful picture you are there. You, uh, you and the two men behind you prove that you can walk in space with or without facial hair. <laughs> I tell you, yeah. Well, and he's both. <laughs> Another thing that you did, I believe. Uh, to follow up on what the Vice President was saying, I think you gave an immense boost to the space program in general and to America's continuing venture in space. Uh, in this last session of Congress, we had uh, quite a struggle to preserve the space station uh, and an adequate ongoing budget for NASA because we were cutting so much else. And I'm really gratified that we were able to do it. And I, I hope that this stunning example of, of what can be accomplished uh, will really reinforce the support uh, for America in space, uh, both in the Congress and in the country. I think it will. All of you were just absolutely wonderful. We want to also uh, 
add a special welcome to the uh, Swiss member of your team because uh, it, it's really uh, symbolic to have an American shuttle with a Canadian robotic uh, device operated by a Swiss uh, astronaut. It's symbolic of the international uh, nature of uh, the space program now. And as we look forward to even closer cooperation and collaboration with Europe and Canada and Japan and now Russia, uh, the whole world uh, will see the space program once again as a symbol of the highest aspirations of humankind. It's been a wonderful mission. Who, who have we not heard from? The rest of you have to talk. There's somebody back home looking for you. <laughs> well, I, I was a little bit remiss, sir, and I didn't uh, introduce uh, all of the crew. Of course, uh, you just heard from uh, Claude Nicolier, uh, the other member of the orbiter crew, and who uh, did a lot of the uh, mechanical arm flying along with Claude, was uh, uh, my co-pilot, uh, Ken Bowersox, uh, on my uh, right here. And... Uh, the other EVA crew members besides KT and Story are Tom Akers on my far uh, left and Jeff Hoffman behind me. Um, I'm sure they would uh, all like to uh, make a statement, and uh, I'll let Sock start off. Yes, sir, I just want to say I'm proud to be from a country that supports efforts like this. I think uh, space exploration reflects the continuing pioneering spirit uh, of the American people, and I think it's something we can all be proud of. Hello, Mr. President. Thanks for uh, your congratulations. Uh, of course, for every one of us uh, seven up here, there are literally hundreds of uh, people on the ground, on the ground team, who have put just as much uh, effort and energy and talent uh, into this mission to make it a success as we have. And they uh, not only deserve the credit for it, but we sure wish they could be up here with us. I think that this mission uh, is unique in uh, another way, and that is that it has really combined two aspects of space exploration. It, it has joined the use of space for scientific exploration, which the Hubble telescope is, is so exciting, and, and everyone in the astronomical community and all over the world is waiting to see uh, the results now of the newly refurbished Hubble. And it's joined that with the human space program, uh, and this is very exciting and, and I think uh, is only the, the first part of showing what, what people, machines, and scientific exploration and human ingenuity can do in the environment of space. Well, thank you all. L let me just say again that uh, we are all so proud of you and, and I appreciate what you each and every one of you have said, uh, it's a real clear message about not only your incredible abilities and your courage and the, and the, and the support you got from all those hundreds of people helping you back down here, but uh, of the profound importance of our country continuing uh, its adventures in space. Uh, we depend on it down here for so much scientific knowledge, and uh, we're going to do what we can to support you and to support NASA and to support the space program. And, and uh, you have taken a, an enormous step forward for building that kind of support, not just in the minds, but in the hearts and the spirits of the American people. And, and you've done it with great good humor. And uh, we thank you so much. Thank you. A wonderful, inspiring success story. Well, we truly appreciate those words. And, and uh, we uh, thank you for taking the time to uh, talk with us now. And and also uh, for taking uh, the time to be supportive of our, uh, our nation's space programs. Uh, it's very important to us, and, and you, I can't tell you how proud we are to be able to represent those programs and to uh, be able to, to help bring NASA back to new heights if, if we can do that. You already have
Yeah, thanks. Thank you. Good luck. Do you believe that this flight was a make-or-break uh, for NASA? I don't know about that. I think that this flight's success. Look at it. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> I think that uh, I think this flight's success will plainly illustrate the importance of, of NASA's many missions and reinforce the understanding of that importance in the American people and the support for it. I think that. <laughs> Just the pressurization. <laughs> no, it was somewhat hissing in my response. <laughs> Is it a new lease on life for the space program? Well, I think the space program got a new lease on life in this last uh, session of Congress. Uh, after the completion of the VEST report and the uh, redesign of the space station and Congress reaffirming the support for the space station. And then uh, the support we've achieved at least from uh, the leadership, uh, the appropriate committees in Congress for the Russian participation in the, in the whole continuing vision of the space station. I think uh, that was very important. But this probably will galvanize the public's imagination and support again in, in a way that nothing we could have ever done in this town would have, would have accomplished. Sir, on a more down-to-earth issue, are you going to... <laughs> nice segue. A little segue. Thank you, sir. <laughs> are, you, uh, are you ready to fully endorse this idea of gun ownership, licensing, and registration? Well, as I said, I, I want... that We had... There are about... Well, there are a whole lot of different ideas that have been advanced in this whole area, including... Uh, uh, a much better uh, oversight of people who actually sell weapons in the country and a whole series of things on that. You know, that's a question of federal registration as well as some state and local registration too, at least for over-the-counter sales. And there are any number of other issues, for example, uh, if, uh, and keep in mind, I keep saying we have to do these things one at a time. The crime bill with the amendment by Senator Feinstein, which passed the Senate, has not yet passed the House. That's a very important step because that will be a measure of the, of the willingness of the Congress to move forward here in, in banning some of these assault weapons. But another big step will be getting the federal government, the Treasury Department, ATF, the capacity to define identical assault weapons that may not be mentioned by name in the law but that are the same thing with just some minor modification to try to get around the law. In other words, there are a whole set of issues here that I believe we have to look at and, and make decisions on and then set up a set of priorities based on how much we can get done and how quickly. On the issue of the, the registration um, of, of either the guns themselves or the people who own them, you know, in, in the question of automobiles, we, we have both people registered. You know, they have people have an automobile license and the cars themselves are registered. Uh, and that's all done at the state level, but the, a lot of the information is in national computers for law enforcement purposes. For example, if someone steals your car today and drives it to another state and leaves it in the parking lot of a shopping center and it's found, the license number could be fed back into the computer and you could be told within a matter of a few seconds normally that the, your car has been turned up and where it is. Uh, so what I am am doing now is to ask the Justice Department to work with our staff to analyze all these proposals, both on the merits, is this right or wrong, and, and secondly, for the details, how could it be done, and thirdly, what should we do in what order? And that's what I'm looking at now. I, the, the main thing I can tell you is that we are committed to going further. The Brady Bill was a good first step. It will save some lives, especially for people who have established records of, uh, of uh, mental uh, problems or clear criminal records. But it is nowhere near enough. It is the beginning, and, and we have got to move forward. Not the, uh, North Korea's, uh, oh, I'm not really at it at all. I mean, I'm interested, but, I, but you heard my answer. I, I just think it's very important that we, we know exactly what we're talking about. How would it be done? What are the mechanics? 
how does it rank in order of priority with these other things we have to do, both in terms of what's most urgent, number one, and number two, what can we most likely get done quickest? And let me just emphasize, if, if you look, there was a study in one of the papers just in the last 10 days uh, on the deaths of young people by gunshot in one of our major cities, which concluded that the increase in the death rate was attributable over the last, over a brief period of time, like over the last five years, we're not talking about 20, but over the last five years, entirely to the dramatic increase in the use of semi-automatic assault weapons as opposed to single shot guns. That, that, that single thing had raised the death rate in the last four or five years more than any other thing. So there, there are lots of issues here. We're going to try to deal with them all in an aggressive and forthright way, but we have to figure out exactly what to do and in what order. The, the, the possibility of movement here has just opened up, and the American people need to keep the pressure on, and we'll keep moving. Yes. Uh, the, uh, the, Koreans, uh, the North Koreans seemed uh, pretty inflexible yesterday in their uh, statement about the, their offer being take it or leave it. Is there more flexibility in private than they're showing in public? Well, I, let me just say we have some hope for the continuing uh, discussions. I, I wouldn't, uh, you know, when, when negotiations are going on, I'm always reluctant to characterize them one way or the other, whether it's GATT or uh, or with North Korea, I just don't want to do that. But I, if you've asked me, have I given up on the on the discussions? The answer to that is no. We're aggressively pursuing. Thank, Thank you. you. That was really fun. What they? I was trying to think of some live story. Yeah, you should. I couldn't think of one. Yeah, that's good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.